Hi subscribers and watchers, what's up? It's me, Vivs from Slidener here. In this video, I'm gonna talk about what are variables and keywords in JavaScript. Now in an earlier video, I've talked about identifiers, comments, and other building blocks of the JavaScript syntax or grammar which defines how code should be written and what are the different rules when it comes to writing code. Same way, there are certain words called keywords which have predefined meaning assigned by your JavaScript interpreter. In other words, you cannot use these keywords for giving names or anything related to your own purpose. Now, if you guys remember identifiers, they were nothing but names given by you guys when you're writing code. For example, you said where x equals to 100. x is a name that you guys give. You can also say where my number equals to 100. In that case, my number becomes the identifier. Now, you cannot use keywords for naming stuff that you guys create. So here's a list of keywords. Now this list changes with each version. Therefore, if you guys wanna know what is the latest list of keywords, you should Google it. Now let's talk about reserved words. At the same time, other than keywords, there are certain words called reserved words. Currently, they have no meaning. But in the upcoming versions of JavaScript, they are gonna act as keywords and therefore you're not supposed to use them again as identifiers or giving names to the stuff that you guys create. Now there's again changes with the versions of JavaScript. At the time you're watching this video, this probably might not be the same and therefore you use Google for finding out the list of reserved words as well. So next question, what is a variable? Variable is anything that contains a value. For example, say it has vivs or it has 16,000. If you remember math, you say x plus y is 10, x minus y is 3. x and y are variables that contain certain values. Same way in programming or JavaScript, which is very much like your mathematics, you have variables that contain certain values which you want to use and do something. For example, you want to use a calculator, you add x and y, or you subtract x and y, multiply x and y, or divide both of them. So when you use the variable, you refer to the data it contains. For example, you can say age equals to date today minus birth date. In this case, what your JavaScript interpreter is going to do is get the value of date today, which is something that you guys see on your calendar right now, and it's going to get your birth date. It's going to subtract both of them, and it's going to store that value or the result of subtraction inside age. So you use variables to store retrieve and manipulate values that appear in your code and programming is all about values what you want to do with them how you want to store them and how you want to access them that's all about programming so give your variables meaningful names to make it easy for other people to understand what your code does for example you could say where x is 10 but in this case after six months you come back and you read you're gonna you're gonna wonder what is x rather why not name it where my number one equals to 10. So in that case, it makes more sense. So let's talk about declaring variables. Now, before you use or try to access values, you have to actually create them in memory. Now, if you guys remember, everything runs on RAM, right? So inside RAM, that is where you store the values. So first, you gotta create the variable, which means put the value inside RAM. So to define a variable, you use the keyword called where. Now remember, where is a keyword. It indicates a special meaning associated with it. In other words, where means I want to create something that is going to store something inside the RAM. That's what the where keyword means. So you can say something like where message and put a semicolon. In other words, you're saying that I want to have a variable called message which may contain some value. Now at this point, it actually doesn't have any value. So this code defines a variable named message that can hold any value. Now of course, since you have not, since you have not given any value to message here, its actual value is undefined and I will show you this in WebStorm shortly. So these are some examples of how you can tell your JavaScript interpreter to create some values inside RAM. So you can say where age. In this case, you're telling the interpreter that create a variable named age whose value is undefined since you have not given anything. The second statement you have where age, comma, date, comma, amount. There are three variables that are being created. The third statement, take a look at that. Age is 24, date is 16, 6, 2020, amount is 21,600. In these three statements over here, you're giving three 
separate values to three separate variables which are going to be stored on your RAM. So let's go to JetBrains WebStorm and try to explore these variables and keywords in a little more detail and make you guys understand better of what we were doing so far. So here I'm using JetBrains WebStorm to do my stuff. I have a simple HTML page where there's a script tag right inside the page. Inside this I'm gonna write some JavaScript code. Let's say I want to add two numbers. So how do I do that? First of all to add two numbers and show the result I'm gonna need three variables. First variable let me make that I could say something like number one equals to ten. Now the problem with this approach is this is not mathematics. This is JavaScript. You gotta tell your interpreter that you are creating a variable called number one whose value is gonna be ten. Please make memory for this variable inside the RAM. So this is what your var keyword does and that's why you write var space number one is ten. Now to make another number you could say something like var number two equals to twenty something like that. Now of course this is two separate statements now you could also mix them up together in other words just remove this after number one equals to ten put a comma say number two equals to twenty. So this is another way of doing that. Now do you have to give values always? Not necessary but what happens if you don't give values. Let's take a look at the third number. Let's say where sum just like that. And let's try to print the value of sum and see what happens. You can directly say alert and put sum inside the parentheses. In other words, this alert is going to display the value contained inside the variable sum. But notice the irony over there. I said value contained inside the variable sum. Sum has no value. So what is it going to display? Let's take a look at that. Go to Google Chrome here and as you guys notice it says undefined in JavaScript when you don't give a value the value that pops up in front of you is undefined. Now of course if you don't write the keyword here and if you directly try to put sum here let's take a look at what happens. Go to Chrome over here and if you notice the script doesn't run. Actually there is an error because of which the script doesn't run at all. You are supposed to declare this variable before you try to use it. In other words you have to tell the interpreter that give me some memory for this variable called sum and make its value as number one plus number two. So when your interpreter runs it's gonna see the statement it's gonna say okay number one is 10 created on the RAM done. Number two is 20 created on the RAM done. Sum equals number one plus number two. So first it's gonna go to the right hand side of the equal to operator. It's gonna add the value of number one which is 10 with the value of number two which is 20. That result is 30. That 30 is gonna be stored inside the variable sum. So when you print sum here the value displayed on the screen is 30. Go to Mozilla Firefox this time for a change and run that. As you guys notice it says 30 over here. So that's how variable declaration and variable stuff works. In JavaScript. So in the upcoming videos we are going to dig a lot deeper into many more things in JavaScript. In the meantime if you guys do like what you saw please like this video, share this video, subscribe to SlideNerd and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks to RJ Christie and if you guys have any presentations on any subject email us at slidenerd at the rate gmail.com. Have a nice day.